Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kaplan. I'm a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today I am filming from my bedroom because I actually have the flu and I feel like crap. I probably look like crap, but I just wanted to keep up the consistency with posting a video every Sunday on YouTube. And if this doesn't get posted tomorrow, which would be Sunday, hopefully it'll be later on this week. But Regardless of how I feel or where I am, I'm literally in my bedroom. I just have been like in bed for the last 24 hours just feeling miserable, but I feel a little bit better right now and wanted to at least get content out for you guys. And so the topic that I wanted to talk about today was lower face rejuvenation because I saw a lot of that in my office this week. So my office is 100% cosmetics um, and aesthetic procedures so usually we do lasers and injectables and peels energy based devices combination laser therapy all the things even some uh, minimal cosmetic surgeries as well but i feel that overwhelmingly um last week it was all about like the lower face and maybe it's because you know masks are coming off or maybe it's because jawline is getting a lot more attention in social media for whatever reason it was more like lower face rejuvenation so i wanted to focus on that today because there's so many different aspects and mechanisms of action that we can make the lower face and neck. I'm just going to fo focus on lower face. I'll do a whole other neck video later, but there's so many different things that we can do, which is actually a good thing because you never want to just stick with one treatment over and over and over again to make one aesthetic area look its best. And so what I mean by that is I see a lot of people coming in with overfilled overfilled lower faces with just a ton of filler. And I think it's because maybe there's a lot of um, medispas that just pump up their patients with a bunch of filler, 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 and then people end up looking weird and distorted and not like themselves. And the reason why maybe people are giving so much filler is because there's probably it's easy to hand somebody a syringe and say, okay, here, have at it, you know, inject your patients and wish you the best, you know, but really it comes at, with a lot of training and high level of skill to understand when is it appropriate to do filler, when is it appropriate to maybe do a laser or a tightening device or combination laser tightening devices or thread lifts or other modalities that are going to address and snatch that lower face. Even neuromodulators used in the right way can help really define the jawline and kind of snatch up that skin, depending on each individual patient, how much skin laxity is there and how that particular patient is aging. So I think the purpose of this video is to kind of go over different treatments available for lower face rejuvenation, jowls, jawline, this whole area, a AP projection, Kybella melting fat. There's so many different things that we can do, but what I I see a lot of my patients having happen to them is they'll go to a medi spa and get like five to ten syringes of filler which is way too much and maybe it's because it's kind of like a lower tier lower level of you know, treatment where filler is not the answer to everything. Filler is not the way you lift, tighten, and pull. Fillers definitely have their role in, say, for example, lip augmentation or, you know, filling in the uh, tear trough area sometimes or temporal hollows when people are, are thinning out right here or getting sunken in the temples or for people that don't have very defined jaw lines. That's fine. And if you see me as a patient, you know I'm a super conservative injector, but I'm very holistic and balanced when it comes to treatments. You can't just do a ton of filler and have that be the treatment of choice to you know, make you look better. You wanna maybe tighten the skin on top. Maybe you wanna do a little filler to define the jawline. Maybe do we do a little neuromodulator for a Nefertiti lift. Sorry if you hear my kids in the background. Let's see if it stops. Okay, I think it stops. So <laughs> I'm authentic guys, you know, like, this is just how it is. This is real life. Kids screaming in the background. Mom's sick up in, in bed resting where I'm actually filming a YouTube video now that I feel better um, and just going to keep it going. So breaking down the lower face area and like the jowls, if you will, you know, kind of like the little jolly saggy skin that happens right here. Why does that happen? First, there is skin laxity that happens as we get older. You know, even as early as our 20s, this can start to happen. We lose about 10% of collagen each decade. And the collagen and the elastin are the proteins in the skin that give skin that turgor, that make it tight, that make it uh, bouncy, that make it taut, and that make it smooth. And as we lose that over time, not only with age, but exposure to HEV, non-visible blue light from our devices, from environmental toxins and pollutants that our skin encounters on a day-to-day -day basis, we're usually 
usually a lot of our skincare active ingredients like MDR, my skin line, we're chock it full of anti-aging polypeptides and antioxidants because your skin encounters every day toxins and pollutants from the environment that could break down our collagen and elastin and cause crepey, saggy, textured skin. Um, so skin laxity and loss of those extracellular matrix proteins, collagen and elastin can cause the skin to sag and to fall. So that's one thing. The other thing is that we have volume loss. You know, we have fat underneath our skin. We have subcutaneous tissue that thins out over time. And that's why if you guys see all the hype right now on social media about buccal fat pad removal, that's why dermatologists are going crazy because young women in their 20s are taking out the fat pads, the buccal fat pads to make them look more contoured or um, you know more chiseled or gaunt. But when you're older, when you're in your late 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond, and you don't have that volume, that will significantly accelerate aging. So volume loss um, happens over time. And as you look at the skull in like an aging face between the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond, the skull gets smaller, the bony structure changes, and the fat pads thin. That's why you get tear troughs in the um, under the eye area because that eyelid cheek junction starts to separate as those fat pads thin and separate over time. So the same thing happens right here. And as the volume underneath the skin starts to thin out, you don't have that structural mechanical support holding up the gels that you did before, or holding up that lower face like you did before. You also get bone resorption. So sometimes people are born with hypoplastic jaws. I mean, I have early, you know, my patients and my beauties who are in their 20s sometimes don't like their profile or say that they don't really have a defined jawline. That's not because they've lost bone. They're usually too young for that, but they may have not had a, like a prominent bony structure. And in that case, Volux or Voluma or some fillers with a high G prime, I'm sorry, yeah, a high G prime will basically um, kind of chisel that out and add that definition so you have that sharp angular definition regardless of what angle you're at. So when your friends are taking pictures of you and you're like, oh, I hate that picture, you'll say, yeah, I look good. I love that picture. Look at my jawline's popping. So um, that's where fillers come into place, whether you're older and have had bone resorption or you're younger and you don't really have a strong bone structure, fillers can do a lot in that area of the face. So because we have volume loss, we have bone resorption and we have skin laxity, and there's other contributing factors that can cause sagginess or uh, jowling of the lower face and skin, we have to approach each individual patient on a patient by patient basis. If you're a patient of mine and you see me in my dermatology clinics, you know that that's how I practice medicine. That's the art of cosmetic dermatology. You don't do the same cookie cutter thing on everyone. Sometimes people may have a lot of volume, but they have loose skin. Sometimes people have you know, no volume, but they have tight skin. And sometimes people will have just like a lot of sun damage or photo damage that has just depleted their skin of the collagen and elastin, making it crepey and saggy, and they may need just a tightening device. So sometimes people will just need a little bit of Botox along the jawline for the Nefertiti lift. And the way that the Nefertiti lift works is it basically the botulinum toxin or any neuromodulator for that, modulator for that matter, because there's so many of them now, you inject it along the jawline and it basically inhibits the muscles that pull down to soften and it allows the muscles that uh, pull up to go unopposed. So it just really contours and defines out that jawline. So that's neuromodulators. Fillers in the angle of the jaw or actually in the jaw bone itself in the mandible or even in this kind of uh, chin area will help define and give that lower face structure and it'll also help tighten up the skin on top because you're giving that mechanical support underneath the skin that has been lost. It's like you think of the skin as a tablecloth and the table underneath are those underlying structures that as they thin out, the tablecloth starts to stag. But if you build it back up, the tablecloth or the skin on top of it becomes more tightened and it becomes taut and smooth and contoured and snatched. So people always ask lasers. Now do lasers tighten skin? For the most part, lasers are more resurfacing devices that help with the surface of the skin, the epidermis, the uppermost level of the skin. And Fraxel CO2, ablative, non-ablative lasers, what they do is they stimulate collagen so they can tighten to a certain extent, but they're not known as tightening devices. They're resurfacing devices. And what's the difference? What does that mean? Resurfacing just means it's almost like taking sandpaper and just sanding off the top layer of a surface to make it smooth, to make the brown spots go away, to make the blood vessels or like red spots, discoloration, hypopigmentation pigmentation, hyperpigmentation, and all that dysregulation of the skin to make it a smooth, contoured, even toned, even structured surface. And it does, lasers do stimulate collagen. Now, ablative lasers versus non-ablative lasers 
both can stimulate collagen, but ablative lasers stimulate collagen more. Now, what's the difference between ablative and non-ablative? Ablative lasers are photons, which are collimated light in any laser. They vaporize heat. That's why there's like a smoke plume that comes out when you're, la when you're lasering the skin. It basically is removing skins by vaporization of a collimated wavelength of light and that stimulates collagen and the little bit of dissipation of heat also stimulates collagen and elastin and helps make new skin in the areas that were treated. Now, non-ablative, which Fraxel Restore, you guys know that that's one of my favorite lasers, actually does the same thing. It's not as aggressive, so the results aren't as impressive, but there's less downtime. It's a lot easier to endure as a patient going through the procedure, and it also resurfaces the skin very lightly, but there's no removal of skin through vaporization. It just heats up the skin. So ablative lasers remove skin through vaporization, whether they're fractionated, meaning taking, taking fractions of the skin out, or fully ablative, where they take the whole first layer off versus non-ablative lasers that just basically poke thousands of tiny little microscopic holes in the skin, but just heats up those zones of thermal damage, not taking out that skin. But regardless, lasers are way more superficial. Tightening devices like Thermage or Ultherapy, or there's so many new tightening devices now on the market, but the two OG tightening devices are Thermage and Ultherapy. I mean, there's Softwave now, there's a lot of different ones. I've played with them all, and the reason why I have a Thermage in my office is because that's the one that has stood the test of time and that has had consistently great results, happy patients, high satisfaction rates, high physician satisfaction rates. And on the topic of Thermage, if you guys Google it or you research it, you're gonna see mixed reviews because there's mixed people, operators, that are performing this device. When it's a very, thermage and tightening devices are very operator dependent. If you're getting it on a group on and you're having an esthetician do your thermage for you and they're cutting corners and they're maybe not using the, the right hand piece and instead of giving you 900 pulses, they're giving you only 200 pulses, that result's gonna be a lot different than if you go see a plastic surgeon or a board certified dermatologist or MD who is pushing the, safely and effectively pushing the, um, Here's somebody coming in, Ray Ray. This is real life. Mommy's doing a quick video while I feel a little bit better. Okay. So if, if I'm just gonna keep this rolling. So if you, you know, results may vary. I mean, it's like having a total hip replacement done by an orthopedic surgeon or like a dentist. My dentist didn't perform that ortho, you know, that, that orthopedic surgery that well on me. Well, yeah, he's a dentist, he's not an orthopedic surgeon. You can't compare the two differences. And people may get mad at me for saying this. I don't mean to hurt anybody's business. I don't mean to say anything negative about less than highly, you know, highly trained, fellowship trained dermatologists, but I also wanna protect you guys. As a consumer, I can't protect you know people who are not trained to do thermage and people who are cutting corners and using the same handpiece on three different people and not getting results. I can't protect people from do, not giving results. I can't protect people from practicing that way. But what I can do is empower you guys in telling you the background story and aesthetics with you know a thousand medi spas in every street corner these days. Why you're seeing different results when you look, you look at different reviews. Why does thermage work for some people and some people it doesn't? Why do thread lifts are slam dunk and people are so happy or they don't notice results or they get these horrific complications? It's really operator dependent, you guys. All these treatments that you get in nowadays, everybody's an expert. Everybody's that you look for a fellowship trained, board certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon and you will not go wrong. If you're in a medi spa and that person has an extender that may not be doing it the right way, that's why you're seeing these less than desirable outcomes. That's why you're seeing fat atrophy or fat loss or volume loss or some of these complications. So anyway, bringing it back home to where we're talking about thermage and tightening devices. Tightening devices for the lower face have their role and can really, really um, make an improvement. Now between Ultherapy, Softwave, and Thermage, I feel like Thermage gives the best results, which is why I have that device in my office. And it's not an immediate result. Usually it takes about two to three months to start to see the changes. And then a year later, you definitely see the changes. And you're inducing your body's own regenerative processes to make collagen. And when you make collagen, as you lose collagen, as you get older, you're kind of staying in the same place. And you're making collagen at the same time as you're kind of losing it as you get older, and that's the true meaning of anti-aging. I've done Thermage myself three times in my life. I'm mid 40s, I'm 45, I'm almost turning 46, and everybody's asked me like, I've looked at your older YouTube videos when you were in your 30s and you look much better now. Honestly, I keep those old YouTube videos up. I'm in my 30s there. I'm also overworked working 80 hours a week. I was, uh, 
you know, 92 pounds, I think at that time, and I was overworked and I did not really have time to take care of myself. Now that I have my own private practice, now that my kids are older, now that I've launched my skin line, and I'm kind of doing things that make me happy. Um, I take better care of myself, but that includes three thermage treatments on my lower face and neck. So I think that has a large um, part of it, the reason why I look probably better now in my mid-40s than I did in my 30s when I first started on YouTube. So take a look at those videos because I look horrific. But I leave them up there for you guys. I could easily take them down, but I don't want to because I think it's really important to show natural progression and you know I'm very transparent with things that I have done myself. And I also, now that I'm older, stay away from fillers a lot. I'm way more focused on lasers and energy-based devices and using really high quality, high grade skincare products, which is why I formulated my own skincare line, MDR, because you know I, I there's no control. There are some really great skincare lines out there, but they get bought out by other companies, and then the quality of their ingredients go down. And if I've engineered my own and I knew what was in those products, and I knew you know what that they wouldn't be changing, and they would only get better as time goes on and more advances and discoveries are made, then that was the reason why I generated and formulated my own skincare line. So again, using good skincare products too to help stimulate your body to make collagen and elastin to keep that skin nice and tight will really, really pay dividends, especially for lower face rejuvenation and keeping that lower face nice and smooth and tight without surgery over time. Okay, so recapping, we've talked about fillers, we've talked about neuromodulators, we've talked about energy-based devices like Thermage and um, Oltherapy. We haven't talked about combining lasers and energy-based devices together. So that's Thermofrax. So as I said before, Justin just came in to say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. I'll be, I'll be out in just a second. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so we talked about how lasers kind of stimulate collagen at the superficial more part of the skin and energy-based devices kind of get it at the lower part. When you combine them together, for example, Thermofrax is my favorite combination. I've actually given lectures on this in academic meetings. And it combines the superficial stimulation of collagen with the deeper stimulation of collagen, but it's like a one plus one equals three reaction because they synergistically augment each other because you're adding more heat into the skin than you would be by doing either treatment alone. So Thermofrax, I've been doing a lot of um, within the last couple months, it's gotten a lot more attention and we're seeing amazing results. So Thermofrax is a one-time treatment. You don't have to do it more than once, but combining Thermage and Fraxel, especially for this area between the lower face and the upper neck right here, we just knock it out of the park and patients are so happy and it's really no downtime, no pain. And when it's done correctly, there's no pain because you're going to probably Google it and look up Thermofrax and people are gonna say it's painful. It shouldn't be painful. None of my patients ever complain about pain. And if you're one of my patients and you're reading this, you wanna drop a comment in the comment section and back me up on this, it should not be painful. When it's painful, that's not being done right or it's an older platform, it's an older device and you may be putting yourself at risk for fat loss or volume loss. But when it's done by the book, when it's done the right way and when you concentrate that treatment right into this area, um, with just some enough energy and heat to stimulate collagen and elastin, but not too much to deplete volume, it just knocks it out of the park and my patients are also happy and I'll share some before and afters as well. So for those of you also who ask for my before and afters, I post on Instagram every day. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me there too because I post my before and afters and I will try to start saving them now on my highlights so it'll be an easy reference for you. So with all these different tools in our toolbox, we have neuromodulators to affect the muscles. We have filler to add in volume where the bone has been lost. We also have fillers like Sculptra or Radius, which are biostimulatory fillers, which add, increase our body's own regenerative processes to make volume. For example, in the mid face, we have our tightening devices that tighten the skin through various forms of energy, microwave, ultrasound, radio frequency. Radio frequency is what thermage is, all therapy is ultrasound. We have thread lifts that can mechanically pull, and now we have Elecor, which is microcoring, to help basically essentially shrink wrap the skin. You're basically taking mild little zero less than you know one millimeter uh, cores of skin out that basically is taking out the same amount of skin that would be removed in the facelift and kind of just tightening it up so they call it shrink wrapping the skin which is essentially the mechanism of action of the Elecor device that one's still new though so we'll have to see how that one goes um, micro needling is also another alternative i'm not a big fan of micro needling because i see so many either side effects from it or people that are not very happy from the procedure so i've never been a really big micro needling fan um, since its launch I was very excited about when it first launched, but when the results were just underwhelming, I 
stopped recommending it for my patients and I sold my microneedling device. Um, and then these are all just different treatments. So, you know, whether going back to the beginning of the video when I talked about skin laxity, bone loss, or volume loss, these different mechanisms of action address those changes. Bone loss with filler, skin laxity with tightening devices or active ingredients in skincare, um, Elicor for skin tightening and so forth. So when you look at the changes in a lower face and think about what's happening, the bone resorption, the skin laxity, and the volume loss, and you think about, okay, what mechanism of action is this treatment gonna provide me? If it's filler, okay, that's gonna add in back that jaw bone that has been lost and it's gonna help mechanically pull up on my jowls or, um, Sculptra biostimulatory filler in the mid face is going to add that volume back which is going to help snatch me back up because I've lost that volume over time or a tightening device is going to stimulate collagen and elastin to help tighten the skin which is like that tablecloth on top of the underlying structures so when you think of it like a dermatologist would or a plastic surgeon would then it kind of makes sense why these different treatments work and why not just doing the same treatment over and over again and not kind of targeting the problem through different mechanisms of action is best you know if you keep putting sorry if you keep putting filler you keep adding volume in an area over and over again but you're not addressing the skin laxity on top of it it's going to look weird you're going to have this pillow face overfilled face with this loose skin on top of it that's not going to work if you do a bunch of tightening devices and your skin's nice and taut but you lost that that line that definition of the mandible you're gonna need some filler to accompany the thermage. So it's important just for you guys to think of things that way and I hopefully after watching this video, you'll see these different mechanisms of action and why we choose to do what we do and to kind of make a more informed decision with your provider on which treatment would be best for you for the lower face laxity that you are experiencing. So last but not least, thread lifts. Thread lifts for this area down here. So thread lifts, I like PDO threads. I've been doing them for, for years. Threads provide two improvement mechanisms of action for that lower face. Not only, so when they're placed, for example, say you wanna um, tighten up the lower face in gels, there's usually two or three entry points and you do about two strings per entry point and you basically thread them underneath the skin. You stay within the dermal plane and there should not be any puckering, you should not be able to see the threads through the skin. When done by a professional, especially somebody who's a surgeon who understands the dermal plane well and understands the various um, depths of the skin and where to get it to have the most effect but not any side effect it's done it's a beautiful beautiful treatment and not only does it mechanically lift up on the skin but it also acts as a slow depot of filler almost like sculpture which is polyolactic acid so this the threads not only mechanically pull on the skin but it stimulates your body's own regenerative processes to make collagen because people usually get a little bit fuller from threads not in a bad way in a good way but they get a little bit fuller and they're snatched because of the mechanical pulling of the thread so I do threads a lot and my practice I usually use it as like the last resort we'll usually start for um, lower face laxity we'll usually start with the simplest like following the algorithm a little bit of filler or neuromodulator then we'll do a thermage and then if they still want to see a little bit more then we'll do thread lifts and if somebody needs um, a little bit more help more than that then I defer to my plastic surgeon colleagues for surgery because usually if if, if the laxity in the gels are too significant to be um, improved with some of the modalities that are non-surgical that I just mentioned then sometimes they require surgery to make them happy and I have um, esteemed plastic surgeon colleagues of mine who I know and trust who I refer to and um, a lot of my patients though don't want surgery and never want to have to have surgery and they don't want to go under the knife and you know have anesthesia and be put under and they don't want the scars they don't want to have those surgical scars and things like that so to each his own this is just more focusing on lower face rejuvenation with non-surgical results but like I said I always offer surgery to my friends too even though I don't perform it myself I can refer you to reputable people who can help you so I think that's also really important as a provider I also I often will offer treatments that's beyond my level of expertise whereas I think some you know other offices will say um, you need filler and that's the only option for you and it's basically because they don't know how to do anything Anything else I don't know how to do surgery but if somebody needs surgery I'll say hey listen I wish I could help you but I can't perform these surgeries but I'll put you in excellent hands where I know you'll be taken care of and get a good result and I think that happens a lot like in aesthetics too like gosh what's it with an example um, sometimes people won't do tear trough filler because they're not comfortable with it so patients will come in having these under eye hollows and instead of the provider giving them tear trough filler with a cannula right under the eye they'll give them volume in the cheekbones because that's an easier thing to do and I, that's just not 
right. I'm very full disclosure as a physician. You know, I'll say, hey, these are your options. I can't do these two, but if you want those two, I can send you the right way. So lower face rejuvenation for non-surgical um, rejuvenation, filler, Botox, tightening devices, Fraxel or some type of resurfacing laser, thread lifts, and the last but not least newer um, tool in our tube toolbox is Elicor. I did a whole video on Elicor. If you guys haven't watched it, you should take a look because it's a new innovation, innovative revolutionary technology which we're going to be um, providing in our office soon. I bought the device. I don't have any ties to the company. I didn't accept any discounts or any, any partnerships with the company because I wanted to like I said, I'm, I'm not sponsored. I don't take any paid partnerships and I want to recommend products and devices that I truly feel are best for my patients, not because the company is paying me to. And on the flip side, if I don't like a device and I do buy it and I'm not happy with it and my patients aren't happy with it, I want to say, okay, no, I don't want this device anymore. And I'm not locked in by a company to keep promoting it if it's not performing um, to our liking and ours, meaning I mean mine and my patients. So that's all for today. Elicor for lower face, I think, will be one of our new best friends, especially for a non-surgical facelift result. And um, thank you guys for watching. Again, I am sick as a dog right now. I'm about to go to see my own physician in about an hour to see how I can kick this flu faster. But thank you for letting me just do this video from my bedroom with kids running around and Justin coming in here and me having... 103 degree fever. All right. I love you guys. You're what keep me going. I love you. And I felt like if I didn't do a video, then I'd be missing part. My, a part of me would be missing. And it actually makes me feel happy and better to um, engage with you guys. All right. Happy weekend. And we'll see you guys soon. Leave a comment in the comment section on any other topics that you want to hear about. And um, I'll get back to you guys. Of course, I give preferential treatments to my subscribers. So subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share this video or this channel with anyone who loves skin science as much as we do. All right, you guys. Love you. Bye.